Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, as you guys can hear the sounds behind me, we're, 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 we're on the legendary Sheridan Street. We're walking back home from Hollywood, back to Danny after a long workout, just getting our day started off on the right foot. I wanted to make a video because um, a YouTube channel that I began to frequent, I, I, well, I wouldn't say frequent, but I've, I've watched a couple videos and I'm a, I'm a subscriber, so big shout out to this guy. Showbiz the Adult, all right? If you don't know Showbiz the Adult, go over to his channel, go subscribe to him. He's putting out good stuff. Uh, seems like a cool guy. He made a video that I watched uh, a, couple weeks, a couple weeks ago. He made a video that I, I, I had a chance to watch, and I thought it was interesting, and it got me thinking, so I figured I'd do my own version of this because it, it's just good, it's some good boxing talk. So basically, Showbiz the Adult, he made a video basically about 10 fight it was 10 fighters today who could fight in any era right 10 fighters of today who could fight any era so i don't know i don't know if, I, if i'm gonna do 10 fighters um from today who could fight from any era but, but I, I, i'll give you guys a couple names that that, that that spring to mind about guys from this era who are currently fighting currently active who i think could have made it in any era of boxing history so We'll start it off, man. Uh, the first fighter that comes to mind about of, of for fighters who could who, who could cut it in any era is a guy who just won this past Saturday, Earl the True Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr. Um, he is he has first of all he has really great boxing fundamentals. The guy has amazing punch placement. He has uh, um, really good understanding for positioning and, and, and ring generalship, and those are qualities that translate through any era. You know, some guys have speed, some guys have uh, power, but Errol Spence has all that. He's he's a complete fighter, and when you're a complete fighter, when you have his mentality, when you have his work ethic towards training and sparring, you know, he he's kind of come from that that old school cloth. You see what I'm saying? So I think he'd not only be a a good fighter in any era, I think he could actually be a great fighter in any era. Um, because he's just he, he's he's just that good. He is just that good. Um, for those of you who don't know any, who, who don't know much about Earl Spence as a fighter, it is worth noting that one of his favorite fighters of all time is a, is a a guy that you would only know about if you really really follow boxing. And that guy comes in the form of terrible Terry Norris. For those of you who don't know, Earl Spence Jr. is on record and has won a record quite a few times, stating that Ter Terry Norris is his favorite fighter of all time, or one of his favorite fighters of all time. And Terry Norris was a guy that had all the skills. Um, you know, he could have he would he he had all the skills, but he applied them the wrong way. He could have been like a, uh, a, a his career could have turned out a lot better than it did. But he but he loved to fight. He loved to get into brawls, and um, you know it didn't work out for him. But yeah, Earl Spence Jr. He's a guy that I think could cut it in any any era of boxing history. Um, so you got him. All right, so that's one guy. Another guy I think could cut it in any era of boxing history comes in the form of my fa my favorite fighter of all time. He hasn't fought since the Can Canelo uh, Gen uh, Golovkin undercard, the second the second fight. But um, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, and I'm gonna tell you why Roman Gonzalez cut it in any, any era of boxing history. Okay, um, for one. Roman Gonzalez was the pound for pound king of boxing, in case you don't know, okay? So anybody who gets to that level in boxing has to be a special talent. And he was a special talent. And more importantly, moreover, once you go do some history on who schooled this guy on the game of boxing, you know, you have a guy like Alexis Arguello, okay? Who pretty much, pretty much when you look at Roman Gonzalez, he's pretty much the, and I, I'm not trying to, throw any salt in Alexis Arguello, but he's pretty much Alexis Arguello 2.0. He is the upgraded Alexis Arguello. You know, if Alexis Arguello was, um, you know, if, if Alexis Arguello was the Atari, the Roman Gonzalez was a Sega Dreamcast, all right? He was, he was the modern day version of Alexis Arguello, and you saw what he did in his career. You saw him become lineal flyweight champion. You saw him beat Carlos Quadras in his first fight on 115 with no tune-ups. You saw him, you know, just, in three of his four fights when he became world champion, he stopped the champion. You know, winning world championship fights against top opposition by stoppage is no um, small feat. Roman Gonzalez, his fundamentals would translate to any, any era. His footwork, much like Earl Spence, his footwork, his positioning, his uh, 
his philosophy on being economical with, with his movements and his punches and his punch selection. You know, I, I think these are qualities that are transit in any era. And I think Roman Gonzalez, if you put him in the 90s, the 70s, the 60s, if you were to put him in, in there with the likes of Miguel Canto, uh, the great Mexican fighter, or let's say Michael, Michael Carbajal, I think Roman Gonzalez is going to do himself quite a good job and, and um, you know, probably, be, probably still be a champion in the era. I, I think he's just, just that damn good. So Roman Gonzalez is another one, all right? Um, let's see. Let me, go, let me go through the weight classes in my head. Um, hmm. There's a couple guys that I, that are kind of te like teetering. On my, there's a couple guys who are champions right now who I I'm not really 100% sure about. Like one guy that I think might have a chance to be a, a great fighter in any era, even though he hasn't even really proven himself to be a great fighter yet in this era. But uh, Dimitri Bivol, because Dimitri Bivol's uh, again fundamentals, his feints, his his ability to uh, carry power into the later rounds, place his punches the way he does in the later rounds. Those are really outstanding qualities. The only thing a bit of all is, you know, when you go back in the history of boxing, uh, it was a lot more rugged. It was a lot more dirtier. And I, we haven't really seen what he could do with a, with a guy who likes to bully him on the inside yet. So we'll see. I think if he fights Marcus Brown, we'll have that question answered. But uh, he handled Joe Smith Jr. pretty good. So, you know, I, I, I'll say Bivol. I'll say Bivol. I think Bivol will translate. And you, got, you got guys like Pernell Whitaker bigging up his skill set. So Bivol, Bivol will probably be a, a guy that... Um, be a decent, decent fighter in any era. Uh, let's see, who else we got? Um, I mean, well, it goes without saying, you know, Manny Pacquiao. Okay, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, I think would be a, a really good fighter in any era. You know, because there's very few fighters in the history of boxing um, who could punch, punch off of so many awkward and different angles at the speed that Manny Pacquiao punches off of. And with the and you know that, that that speed is very very blinding, that speed is very very quick, that speed, you know, his speed is his power, his speed is his defense, and um, you know I'm not saying that this guy would go on there and beat up Tommy Hearns in his prime or Sugar Ray Leonard or guys like that, but you know Manny Pacquiao, he'd be a problem in any era. I I I, I truly believe so. So I mean I, I so so far we got what Earl Spence. Roman Gonzalez, Dimitri Bivol, Manny Pacquiao. Um, I think Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford would be a, fanta a phenomenal fighter in any era, I think, because he, uh, for one, the way, if you, if you get into Terrence Crawford, stop, hold on, let me, let me cross the street. I'm going to talk to you guys while I'm crossing the street. When you look at Terrence Crawford, right, and you look at his style right now, the one standout, like like, like the, the most standout quality he has about his boxing style actually relates back to, and it's often compared to, um, an older fighter, a guy who was a great fighter in his day, and that's a uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler. And um, Terrence Crawford's ability to switch hit, to fight from the orthodox stance, from the fight from the southpaw stance, you know, there's very few fighters in the history of boxing who have been able to do it at that level to fight, you know, equally as good out of both stances so you know he would uh, definitely give a lot of fighters problems because of his you know his punt his, his uh, hand speed his ambidextrous boxing style um, his ability to command range uh, he, he he'd be a really good fighter in any era I think so Crawford was another one um, what else you got I'm trying to find so I'll find, find a name that's like not obvious. Um, thirty. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Y'all y'all might disagree with me on this one, but I, but but I I really believe this. I think and I I know I know this guy is not the most disciplined fighter in the world, and I know he's a bit arrogant and 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 they're coddling him over there uh, on a certain promotional team. But I think. The best version, and we don't even know how the, the hell, what the hell that looks like yet, but I think based on his skill set and what I've seen, I think Javante Davis would have a chance to be a good fighter in any era um, simply because of the athleticism, uh, the speed, the power, um, you know, the amateur experience, the amateur background. Uh, he, he, he has a kind of, you know, pathway to boxing 
that will lend you to believe that he, he he's he, that he's gonna be a good fighter. You know, he, and he is a good fighter. He's a world champion, but he has um, just a lot of standout qualities: his fundamentals, his speed, his power. But that one's probably debatable. Uh, that that one's probably more debatable than the other ones I said. So you have him. You have. Um, I think, and this will be my last one, and then I'm, I'm going to end the video, but the last fighter that I think would be a, a great fighter in any era, no doubt about it, for me, would be uh, Nayo the Monster Anoye. Nayo the Monster Anoye, that, 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 that mofo can fight. That mofo can fight, man. Um, first of all, when we talk about Nayo Anoye, his defense he doesn't get enough credit. He is defensively one of the tight, most sound boxers in the sport. Um... And that's no small feat when you consider that he's fighting at a smaller weight classes, a smaller weight class where the volume of punches is a lot higher than the other weight classes. And not even just that, you know, if you look at like his counter punching, his um, his ability to get his his foot on the inside or outside of his opponent's lead foot. These are things that he's getting better at on a fight by fight basis. And when we talk about Nayo the Monster Anoye, we're, we're talking about a guy that's dominated everybody they put in the ring with him. Um, before Lomachenko came in the sport, he was the fastest fighter to win a title and, and multiple weight classes. So um, I, I could see him, you know, with the great Japanese fighters of yesteryear at 118 and 115, holding his own, doing his thing, and, 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 and being a, a pretty damn good fighter. So to run back to my list, you got Earl Spence, you got Romo Gonzalez, you got uh, Dimitri Bivol. You got Manny Pacquiao, you got Javante Davis, um, Javante Davis, what was the other one? I, I, I just fucking talked about him. Uh, what was his name? Anoye. And I think that was it. Oh, and Terrence Crawford. So yeah, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Romo Gonzalez, Anoye. And yeah, you, you, you guys heard the list. So let me know what you guys think about my set list, seven fighters that I, li that I had listed. Um, who I think will be good fighters in any era. Uh, what do you think? Who, who do you guys think? Or, were there names I missed uh, of fighters you guys would think would be great fighters or, or good fighters in any era of boxing that could have made it in any era of boxing? Let me know in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe, like I say, in every single one of these damn videos. You can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just gifting Daniels. Until next time, terrorize.